Hello and welcome to Ula Tealeaf Readings. My name is Lenore and tonight I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Virgo. If Virgo is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. All right, let's get started. And so Virgo tonight, our card is the chariot. So usually, <laughs> usually this has to do with like work, hobbies, volunteering, things that you're doing in the physical world, things that you are working on to kind of further whatever project, whatever goal. Uh, I always, when they see the chariot, I think, all right, well now is the time when we're really going to kind of, you know, drill down. You know, we're really going to be focused on the task at hand. All right, let's take a look and see what these tea leaves are going to tell us. And so if you have not subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit that little bell. It'll let you know when the next readings are coming out. It is free to subscribe. Also, if you want to hit the like button or leave a comment, I would love to hear from you. Okay, so I want to start right over here. I feel like there has been, there's been some kind of like fracturing of kinship, of fellowship, of camaraderie, uh, probably in the workplace, maybe within the family or uh, you know, like, I don't know, maybe you're on some kind of team or in some kind of club or, you know, whatever, wherever there's a gathering of people with a common goal, right? And I feel like you probably have a central role. Uh, you've probably been doing this for a while, maybe years even, because I feel like there's a sense of comfort here, uh, or there was. And for whatever reason, there seems to be some kind of, well, it feels like a very minor and insignificant conspiracy. <laughs> uh, like, you know, like office conspiracy, office politics, all this kind of stuff. Uh, now, it might not be in the office, but it does feel like, you know, there's some kind of, Well, you know, I don't know, kind of uh, campaigning to get one person on their side, one person on your side, you know, whatever it is. And I feel like it's something that's brought you stress. I don't, you know, this isn't new to work life, to working on a team of people. Um, you know, there are always going to be personalities that kind of, you know, bring a bit of conflict. But what I'm looking at here is it looks like there's almost this wanting for renewal, re rebirth maybe. Uh, now I'm, I'm seeing we have, it looks like an angel right here. And here's the head, here's the body. It looks like the little wings. Now I'm looking at this and it looks like a fish. It looks like a, uh, you know, maybe something jumping. But when I first saw it, it really, it made me think of, um, you know, uh, uh, something to be in utero, right? In the growth stages. Um, and I don't know how to say it really. Fetus, I guess. I don't know if that's okay for with the, with the algorithm. Um, but yeah, so uh, to me, it's not literal, right? Uh, but I do feel like, and we have the person standing beneath, right? Right here, you can see the, the person here. And to me, it's almost kind of this incubation period that you're in, right? Growing into this next period of your life and ready to start anew. And that's really the feeling that I get here. 
not super stoked on having to make this big kind of leap of faith and, and change you know, whatever, maybe it is that you are leaving your work. Maybe you're deciding to retire. Uh, maybe, you know, it's just gotten to the point where you can't in good conscience stay um, working within this environment. It feels like it's just gotten so toxic. Now, I don't know that you're the one that's leaving or maybe you know, whatever players there are in this scenario maybe they will be leaving but somebody is departing and I feel like this is such a relief it ends up being it's kind of like you you know you don't even notice that this is the problem necessarily until it starts to get pretty bad and then you just you kind of acclimate to it and you almost begin to forget the peace that was before all of this. But as soon as you are out of that dynamic, they have left or you have left or whatever, I feel like it's like taking a splinter out, right? You start to realize like, oh my gosh, this is so much worse than I even realized. And you know what? It might even be that this is in your home. You know, you maybe have somebody staying with you. Maybe you moved in with like your significant other or maybe like they have children. You're trying to blend your families, whatever it is. It, you have this ability, Virgo, to really try to look for the best or at least strive for the best, even when things feel like untenable. Like there's just no way this is going to end up working out. It's just getting worse, but we're still like, I rather just absolutely f completely crash and burn than fail, admit that I'm failing, right? Yeah. <laughs> that I can't get this to work, that I can't figure this out. Um, and I am a Virgo, by the way. So I fully understand this energy a hundred percent and uh, and so I do. I see that there's kind of this alleviated energy. I mean, it just it's it's like the sun came out, right? The clouds parted and it brightened up, and it feels like the world just looks different, right? And so we have that angel, and I feel like really this is you're being watched. You're being watched out for. Right, you have your guardian angel, you have your guide, and uh, even if this is a situation where you know you're in the first stages of departing or or things changing, you might lament some of it. You might think, "Oh my gosh, this is such a um, you know a terrible thing," or it feels like it's just it's never gonna get better or or whatever but when you start to really get on the other side of this thing you will realize that this is a gift that this is something um you know sometimes we hold on a little too long sometimes we try to make things work where um it's just almost and completely unreasonable you know um and i that's not unique to to virgos but we really do I mean, listen, we just, we don't want to fail. <laughs> we don't want to, um, you, I always tell people, I'm like, I'm not competitive, but I'm a Virgo. So like, it's kind of innate. I am a bit competitive. I don't really care what other people are doing, but I know I want to be on top, right? Not, not necessarily, um, ruling over anybody. That's not what I mean, but like, I want to be, Whatever I put my mind to, I want to be doing the best that I can. And I have a really hard time. And I think this is all of us Virgos, right? And I always bring up my sister. She is also a Virgo. I'm an August Virgo. She's a, a September Virgo. And we're, we're very much the same way. The things that we care about, the things that bring us meaning and joy and and just really challenge us in life that's all we care to to master right to put our time and effort into it and i know that you're so much the same 
So when we're in a situation where we've been working really hard to kind of figure out how can we make this work and it just is not and to finally have to be sitting there and deciding like I can't live this way anymore. Um, I'm either have I'm gonna have to like either get up out of here or something huge is gonna have to shift because I can't stick around for this. Okay, and that's really the vibe. And really the energy of this like I'm I need a rebirth in my life, right? I need to begin something else because this is not it. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it this way. And it looks like we have two faces. One here, you can see the eyes, the mouth, and it's kind of the head. And then below here, eyes and then mouth. And it looks to me like a child and their parent. Or maybe two, you know, maybe it's like um, best friends or, or um, significant others. Two people that are very close. Okay, and I see them really kind of hugging, putting their head, like chin against the top of their head and really snuggling in. So I do wonder if you have been going through a kind of sensitive time. Or maybe it is that you have a child that is going through a sensitive time. Maybe a parent or um, your significant other, your loved one. But I do feel that there is this kind of real need and desire for uh, yeah, support and being close and affection. And, um, you know, us Virgos, we're not very quiet about what we need. That's one thing I love about Virgos. Although, I don't know, it must be hard to be married to us. <laughs> we, we do not um, mince our words about what we need. If I, you know, if I want to um, hold hands and cuddle up and, and cry a little, dang it, I'm going to tell you, like, stop what you're doing. I need you. Let's, let's hug this out. <laughs> I, you know, um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to leave breadcrumbs hoping that you figure it out. Like, no, very clearly. <laughs> so, um, I do. I see you really advocating not only for yourself, but whoever, you know, this is that you are very close with. Now, we also have these dogs up here. Okay, so I imagine that whatever is going on, there's also kind of, a, you know, some people in the background that are loyal, maybe even fiercely loyal, because you can see these are kind of like in action, these animals. They're not just like hanging out, laying you know, in a little donut on the floor. No, they're up and moving. They're ready to get going. If you could imagine like a group of guard dogs, like, you know, running together, um, doing their maneuvers. I mean, this is the feeling. So I do feel like there are also other people who are uh, really riding with you. And this means the world, I think, you know. Um, the thing about a Virgo is that we maybe don't have a ton of super close people, but the few that we do, it could last a lifetime. You know, there's like maybe two people in my life. I've never fought with them. We've been friends since I was a child, right? Never had a crossword for each other. Um, you know, and, and there's just my sister, same thing. Virgos, we just have really deep relationships. But that's not for everybody, by the way, right? I'm sure that you know this just as well as I do. When we're like dating or we're courting people as friends, uh, we go from 1 to 50 and 50 to 100 very quickly. You know, there's that thing called trauma, de trauma dumping. And if you've watched my readings, you know, I'm really, I love to talk. No, I don't love to, but I do. I like to share my story, right? I like to share really sensitive parts of my life, uh, probably because one, I'm a Virgo, but two, because I think, you know, I want people to feel like they see parts of me. I don't want to just bring you 
messages and it's like you don't even know who this person is, right? I want you to feel some part of me, just like I want to feel some part of you, okay? I want to see you. I want to witness you. I want to try to understand some of what's going on. And for us Virgos, we put it out there, okay? And not everybody can deal with that. In fact, I think a lot of people find us very challenging, because the minute they get into the room with us, they're like, bro, am I at the therapist? Like, what's going on? You know, but we don't. We don't have that, like, chill factor as far as how, you know, um, people are feeling, how we're feeling. I, you know, I don't know if you've ever talked to somebody and you ask them, really ask them, how are you doing? What's going on with you? You know, and, and they tell you and you ask follow-up questions and they start to get into it. And then they stop and they say, you know what? Nobody has asked me how I'm doing and really listened for a long time. I can't even remember that. Well, for us Virgos, that's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I talk about how I'm feeling constantly. I'm, asked, I'm talking to other people about how they're feeling constantly, if they like it or not, you know. I'm that person, you're, I'm imagining that person that comes in and says, oh, geez, are, is everything okay? I can pick up on your energy, you know, are you, is everything good, you know? And people are surprised that we even notice. And so, uh, yeah, that can be difficult and it can almost feel confronting to some people don't be deter well I mean of course don't stomp on their boundaries but don't take it personally because we are we're a lot we're a lot but not in a bad way right not in a bad way um people should be so lucky to have friends like us <laughs> Uh, we also have, it looks like a crown here and we have a person sitting over here. Um, what is this? It looks like a microscope. We have a, a large A, okay, uppercase A. So I also feel that we have somebody this one looks like it says F-A-C, and I'm looking for the T because, oh, there's a T over there. Fact. <laughs> That's a fact. Um, but I almost feel like maybe you have a Virgo parent or somebody maybe older that you grew up with, a sibling, a um, cousin, a best friend, somebody who is a little bit older. And we have the person on the, we have, it looks like J-O maybe, or 5-O, or S-O. Um, we have the butterfly. So I feel like you had somebody you grew up around who's older, maybe a caretaker, maybe a parent. Uh, but I feel like they really, in your mind, are kind of this, are like uh, archetypal uh, empress, emperor. Um, and I almost, I feel like you, there's like a vacillation between I want to be like, I, you know, I've always hoped to grow up to be as, powerful and a leader and uh part of the family that everybody could trust you know look to for support for guidance um on the other hand i feel like maybe there at times you felt there's an oppressive nature micromanaging and that's why we have that uh, the microscope, right? Really always being looked at so closely. Like, this is like a parent that goes and reads your journal. You know what I mean? Like, you went to school, 
you come home and you find your journal sitting on your bed or something. And it's a betrayal. It feels like a deep betrayal. But you also know this person. You're also a Virgo as well, right? And you know. We're detectives. <laughs> we are detectives. And, you know, um, and so I feel like it's like you understand, but there's also like a sense of you learning from their mistake that uh, how you were raised, you are trying not to do the same, although we have these instincts to be involved in every little thing in the household, right? Um But you don't want to be that overbearing energy. You don't want the people around you to feel like you're always watching. You're always judging. You're always noticing every little thing. You might be. You probably are. But I think that you don't, you know that it creates an energy, an atmosphere within the house, within the family. Uh, that isn't very healthy, ultimately. Now, of course, you take an interest in yours, and you are there, and you are open, and the door is always open for them to come and talk to you and share and ask for advice and all these things. But I think you really refrain from overstepping. And I think that's a really important thing to note. Okay, you're very mindful. Do we slip up sometimes, Virgo? Yeah, of course. But we're trying our best, right? So, let's see. We also have, we have the Omega. Okay, so we have an end. So this is the second fish coming here. Uh, something about money, trying to make some money, trying to get some money together. And this maybe is why that chariot energy is so strong, but I'm trying to see. And I do it. Maybe it is that you are leaving your work. There's an end, but there's also the anxiety of money. But I, I imagine, I imagine that, you know, well, you're, you're a Virgo. We don't just like quit our jobs with no plan. We're too, um, well, I'm not going to say every Virgo is neurotic, but there's no way, right? You just quit your job and you have no idea what you're going to do or whatever. No. Uh, let's go ahead and do the Oracle of the Radiant Sun. I really feel like. This is something that you've been working towards for like a while. I mean, even it could be like the last year or so. Um, getting all of your ducks in a row. And this is like, you're finally there. It's time to do the thing. And I feel like there's a lot of kind of anxiety around it. You know it's the right thing for you. You want to be up out of that situation. But still, so many unknowns. All right, let's do like six of these maybe. We're going to do three to start. Flirtation, Rebellion. Optimism. Okay. Bluff. Okay, now let's do our last three. Or two, 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 two. One, two, where should we go? I'm going to pick this one and this one. There we go. All right. What are the last two? We have resistance and flattery. So we have flirtation, flattery. We have rebellion, optimism, resistance and rebellion, and bluff. So I feel like, yeah, you've been saying, hey, I'm going to leave if this doesn't get fixed. All right. <laughs> I'm not staying at this job or this this volunteer or in this house or whatever. But 
it, there's been some bluffs. There's been, it's been going. So I finally think that, you know, whatever it is, and maybe it is, maybe you've been courted by somebody else. Maybe it is that like you were looking for a job or you're like putting your feelers out there and you know, they're really trying to get you to come over to the company or maybe it is that you're leaving, uh, your living situation. And you know, there's, uh, a little bit of something going on where you, maybe not to like the full dating or courting or seeing each other, but just like a reason that feels a little bit exciting, right? Maybe there's like a hot neighbor or, <laughs> you know, you uh, something, right? But I do feel like there is this kind of little bit of flattery, flirtation. It's making you feel... Um, you know, a little more optimistic and we have that optimism, but really it comes down to, listen, we are, we are very oppositional people, us Virgos. We try to remain as agreeable as we can. We try to compromise. Now we're like not to the level of like a Taurus where it's like, if you, if you get them twisted up and they're like, the, I'm not doing that because you're telling me to or whatever, there's no way to win them back. There's no way. They've got their mind set up, right? Or set. And for Virgo, I feel like we're a little bit more reasonable, but I think we're also kind of more cunning, right? It's not just like brute force. It's more like the long game for us. So I see you in that rebellious resistance and absolutely not taking it anymore, right? You're not going to be devalued. You're not going to be ignored. You're not going to be, uh, you know, dismissed or your problems or your grievances minimized. Not anymore, right? So that being said, let's do our lucky numbers. I'm going to do three lucky numbers. We have 32, number 32, 13, number 13, 32, 13, 50. Okay, 50. Tomorrow is the 13th, I think, right? What's today? Yep. Yes, it is the 12th. Oh, and it's a beautiful, beautiful. It's finally getting cooler here. It has been hot, even in the north. I mean, not like other places, like not, you know, over 100 degrees or anything. But man, it just two days ago, it was like 87 degrees. That's wild for this time of year. And my uh, memories on Google or whatever... I saw pictures of, shout out to my husband over at Dove and Serpent Tarot, my husband Paul over there. Uh, when we first moved in together, like what, I think six or seven years ago or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> six years ago. Um, he was, there was a picture of him in the snow. It was snowing on the 12th a few years ago. So... Uh, my goodness, <laughs> it's far from that right now, but it is beautiful. The colors are gorgeous outside. Um, so let's do our inner child oracle cards, and I'm just going to flip through. I'm going to stop where it feels right, and these kind of punctuate our reading. Number 10, disappointment is not the end. There is hope even in the darkest of nights. There is hope even in the darkest of nights. All right. Well, Virgo, I'm going to tell you I love you because I do. And thank you so much for spending this time with me. It is always such an honor to be able to bring these messages to you. And if you would be so kind as to like the video, it really does help the channel. And if you have not subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit that little bell. It'll let you know when the next readings are coming out. It is free to subscribe. Also, um, what else? Oh, if you want to leave a comment, yes, do it. I read them all <laughs> and I so look forward to them. 
All right, Virgo. Again, I'm going to tell you I love you. Take care of yourself. We'll talk in a few days. Good night. Good night. Good night.